Hi Didi, what kind of online services you are providing this time? Hi Rohan, this time I'll provide you the information about the various citizen-centric services like banking facilities, insurance facilities, issuance of caste certificate, resident certificate, etc. using their online portals. It sounds interesting. Please tell me how can I access these services? Sure, Rohan. Let me first start with the various e-district services, which includes the issuance of caste certificate, resident certificate, and income certificate. Hello, Geeta. Can you please guide me in detail? About how can I get my caste certificate? Yes, of course. The caste certificate facility is provided by the Indian government, as per the Constitution of India, to benefit the Indian citizen belonging from any specific caste or sub-caste with various kinds of special schemes and reservation. To apply for caste certificate, you need to go through the following steps. Firstly, download the e-application form. Then, fill all the mandatory details without any mistake. After that, submit it to any of your recent notary. Before applying, just make sure that all the details are correctly filled. Do I need to attach any document with this form? Yes, you need to attach the following documents with caste certificate form. Any one identity proof like voter ID card, passport, driver's license, RSBY card, Aadhaar card, identity card issued by government or semi-government organizations, PAN card or Manrega job card. Any one address proof like voter ID card, passport, driver's license, Aadhaar card, electricity bill, water bill, extracts of 7 by 12 and 8A, or rent receipt, telephone bill, ration card, or property tax receipt. An affidavit for caste certificate. The caste proof for your blood relative. An extract of your primary school leaving certificate of your or your father. An extract of birth register of the applicant or father or relatives. An extract of government service record or book mentioning caste or community category of applicant's father or relative. A document certifying your caste issued by Department of Social Justice. Validity certificate of father or relative which is issued by scrutiny committee. A copy of revenue records or village panchayat record. Residence proof prior to the date of notification of the caste. Do you have to submit any application fee to get the caste certificate? No. Not at all. What is the procedure for the application of residence certificate? The procedure to apply for a residence certificate is similar to the issuance of a caste certificate. Which documents are required in this case? The documents need to be attached with the residence certificate form R. Any one of the following identity proof like voter ID card, PAN card, passport, driving license or Aadhaar card. Note that the name of the applicant on the Aadhaar card should match with the name of the applicant. A self-declaration is prescribed per forma. In case of children below the 18 years, self-declaration form from the major is required. 
The photograph of the applicant will be captured through web camera at the time of submission of application or at the time of verification. The photograph of the applicant should match with the photo of the applicant on the Aadhaar. Any of your present residential proof document as mentioned earlier. Proof of date of birth like birth certificate, school certificate or passport. Proof of continuous stay in Delhi for the last three years such as education certificate, electricity bill, house tax, water bill etc. Note, it is important to know that all documents need to be attested by gazetted officer. You also must attach a copy of his ID card along with his contact number. Is there any application fees required for getting this certificate? No, this service is also free of cost. How much time will it take to finally get the certificate issued? Not much. Resident certificates are issued within 14 days. Oh, that's good. Is there any other important certificate that we must be aware of? Yes, there is. Also, one should be aware about an income certificate which is relevant to the family income from all the sources. The procedure for its application is same as discussed in case of a caste certificate or residential certificate. But the difference is that this service is chargeable. How much fee is required for applying an income certificate? Only 30 rupees. Yeah, that's quite cheap. And how much time is required to get the final income certificate? Not very long. After the verification of the given application, the income certificate will reach you within 7 days. How can I apply for a voter ID card? To become a voter, you need to fill in the application form 6. Once this form is accepted, your name will be included in the electoral roll as a voter. Can we also apply online for a voter card? Yes, of course. You just need to follow few simple steps. Step 1. Visit the official website of the Election Commission of India. Step 2. Then click on National Voter Services Portal. Step 3. After that, click on Apply Online for Registration of New Voter. Step 4. Enter details and upload the required documents. Step 5. Then, finally, click on Submit. Once you click on Submit button, you will receive an email on the registered email addresses with a link of Personal Voters ID page. After applying, when will I get my voter ID card? You will receive your voter ID card in a month from the date of your application. Which documents are required to apply for a voter ID card? For this, you require one passport-sized photograph, one identity proof and one address proof. I have even heard about digital lockers. Can you explain us about its benefits? Yes, sure. A digital locker provides secure access to government-issued documents. It uses authenticity services provided by Aadhaar. Benefits of Digital Locker It eliminates the use of physical documents and enables sharing of verified electronic documents across government agencies. It provides a dedicated personal e-storage space to citizens linked to their Alhar numbers. 
they reduce the administrative overheads of government departments and agencies created due to paperwork it saves time and effort as documents are available anytime anywhere and can be shared electronically what is required to sign up for digital locker you need your aadhar number and a mobile number linked to that aadhar number how can we create a digital locker to sign up visit official website of digital locker click on sign up button then enter your mobile number and click on continue button enter otp received on your mobile and click on verify button after that set your username and password and then click on sign up button enter your aadhar number and click on submit button enter otp and click on verify button then see the dashboard to upload your current documents online you can also share documents to any email id you can even e sign the uploaded document which can be used as official digital signature on documents banking is also one of the most important citizen centric service this service provides customers with financial services that help people better manage their lives nowadays banks are even getting technologically advanced to attract and support customers you just need to follow few simple steps step 1 First, you should decide the type of bank account you want to open. That is, saving account, current account or recurring account. Step 2. Then, approach any bank of choice and meet its bank officer. Step 3. After that, fill up bank account opening form. Step 4. Give references for opening your bank account. Step 5. then submit that form along with all the necessary documents step 6 your bank account opening form will be verified by the bank officer step 7 finally deposit initial amount in your newly opened bank account step 8 lastly you can collect your checkbook passbook debit card and internet banking details Can you please explain further that how we can use the internet banking facility? Yes, of course. Suppose you have an account in State Bank of India. Now, to activate online SBI internet banking, first you have to visit your SBI branch and register for online SBI internet banking service. Then you will receive first time login details of online SBI via post. Then you need to create a new user ID, a new login password and a profile password. After that, visit the official website of online SBI login internet banking www.onlinesbi.com and then click on the login button. Then a new window will appear with some messages on it. You should read the messages carefully and then click on the continue to login button. Then a new window will appear where you need to insert the username and password which is provided to you by the State Bank of India. Then click on the login button. After that recreate your desired username and your desired login password and save it Also you need to create or enter your desired profile password Hence your online SBI internet banking service will be activated You might have even heard about Pradhan Mantri Jan Dhan Yojana or PMJDY which is a national mission for financial inclusion. What is the use of Jan Dhan Yojana? 
जनधन योजना इंश्योर्स एक्सेस टू फाइनेंशियल सर्विसेज नेमली बैंकिंग सेविंग्स एंड डिपॉजिट अकाउंट्स रेमिटेंस क्रेडिट इंश्योरेंस एंड पेंशन इन एन अफोर्डेबल मैनर फ्रॉम विच बैंक कैन वी अवेल दिस सर्विस For this, one can open an account in any bank branch or business correspondent or bank mitra outlet with zero balance. However, if the account holder wishes to get cheque book, he or she will have to fulfill minimum balance criteria. Which documents are required to open an account? You just require your Aadhaar number. If address has changed then a self certification of current address is sufficient If aadhar card is not available then any one of the following officially valid documents or OVD is required like voter ID card driving license PAN card passport and Manrega card If these documents also contain your address it can serve both as proof of identity and address Is there any other alternative to these documents? If a person does not have any of the officially valid documents mentioned above but it is categorized as low risk by the banks then he or she can open a bank account by submitting any of the following documents Identity card with applicant's photograph issued by central or state government departments statutory or regulatory authorities public sector undertakings scheduled commercial banks and public financial institutions letter issued by gazette officer with a duly attested photograph of the person can you please tell us about the benefits of pmjdy scheme yes of course This scheme provides interest on deposit. Accidental insurance cover of 1 lakh rupees. No minimum balance required. It also provides life cover of 30000 rupees payable on death of the beneficiary. Easy transfer of money across India. Overdraft facility up to 5000 rupees is available in only one account per household preferably lady of the household Beneficiaries of government schemes will get direct benefit transfer in these accounts After satisfactory operation of the account for 6 months an overdraft facility will get permitted Access to pension insurance products The claim under personal accidental insurance under PMJDY shall be payable if the rupee card holder have performed minimum one successful financial or non-financial customer induced transaction at any bank branch bank mitra ATM POS ecom etc Similarly people must get aware of the insurance facility A life insurance policy is a contract with an insurance company in exchange of premium payments the insurance company provides a lump sum payment known as a death benefit to beneficiaries upon the insured death Is this service also provided online Yes one can buy life insurance policy through its online portal Can you please explain in detail about the whole process of buying LIP online? Yeah, definitely. To purchase LIC's e-term, you need to follow the steps. Step 1, firstly visit the given site www.licindia.in. Step 2, then click on buy online and select e-term. Step 3 after that choose your desired sum assured and the policy term Note policy term is the period for which you want the cover The sum assured will be paid to the nominee on the unfortunate event of the death of the policy holder 
Step 4. Then, enter basic details such as name, age, gender, qualification, etc. in this form. Step 5. After that, a premium calculator will calculate the premium for the chosen parameters. The premium will depend on the age, gender, term, sum assured, health and tobacco usage. Lower premium rates are applied to non-tobacco users for sum assured more than 50 lakhs. Step 6. Then select the premium payment mode, annual, monthly, quarterly or half yearly. Step 7. Complete the form online with these details and pay premium online at www.licindia.in. Step 8. Keep the electronic receipt for your reference. Is there any other insurance scheme provided by government? Yes, government provides the Atal Pension Yojana scheme which helps the weaker section to save up for their old age and get a guaranteed monthly pension amount. Under this plan, the subscriber will receive a fixed pension after the age of 60 depending on his contribution amount and tenure. Does government provide any such insurance scheme for senior citizens also? You can apply for this yojana through a subscriber form available online on bank websites and other third-party websites. For example, if you are applying through bank, then the following steps are need to be followed. Step 1. Firstly, Download the Atal Pension Yojana form from any website or get it in hard copy from bank. Step 2. Fill the form and ensure that all information provided is true and accurate. Step 3. Attach your Aadhaar card copy with the form. Step 4. Then, choose the pension amount you wish to get after 60 years of age. After that, you would come to know what premium you would have to contribute every year. Step 5. Then, enter your saving account number. If you do not have a saving account number, you can get it opened in the same branch in normal condition or under Jandhan Yojana. Step 6. Based on the pension amount that you opt for, your premium every month would be deducted from your saving account automatically. This you would have to consent in the form that you fill for the scheme. Step 7. Once you have filled all of these, you can inquire the executive at the bank if they need any additional document with the form and they would help you complete the formalities. What is the age limit of a person who can apply for this scheme? It's 18 to 60 years. Government also provide Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana that is PMJJY to provide personal accident insurance to the high risk category such as mechanics, laborers, truck drivers which involves a lot of traveling. How can I get enrolled in this scheme? You can enroll for Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana through online by following few simple steps. Step 1. Firstly, log in to your SBI internet banking account. Step 2. After successfully logging in, find the social security schemes. Link in the end and click it. Step 3. Then, a new page will open up where you need to select the scheme and your account number. Step 4. After this, click on the Submit button. Step 5. Then, select the CIF number submitted. Step 6. After this, an online application form will open where you should specify some basic as well as nominee details. Note, few details will already be entered by default like your name, address, etc. After entering all the details, hit the enter button. Then, 
you will see a message regarding successful registration and a reference number will also be provided to you. Step 8. You can even check the status of your online application by using the status tab. Can you please tell us about the age limit to avail this scheme? Yes, sure. The age limit for this scheme is 18 to 70 years. Does government provide any such insurance scheme for senior citizens also? Yes, of course. The Union Cabinet has approved the Varishtha Pension Bima Yojana 2017 that is VPBY, a pension scheme for senior citizens. The scheme will provide an assured pension based on a guaranteed rate of return of 8% per annum for 10 years. Please tell us something more about this scheme. The scheme states that it will provide an assured pension for 10 years. The plan is aimed at providing financial security to the person who are aged 60 years. Minimum pension under Varishtha Pension Bima Yojana will be 500 rupees and highest is 5000 rupees per month. LIC Varishtha Pension Bima Yojana has a lock-in period of 15 years. The subscriber will have the option to opt for a pension on a monthly, quarterly, half-yearly and annual basis. The pension will directly add to pensioner's bank account through ECS or NEFT. Check or demand draft will not be issued. The normal pension received from LIC is taxable, but the premium paid under Varishtha Pension Bima Yojana are exempt from income tax under Section 80C. Policy holder can avail loan just after completion of 3 years. The highest possible loan amount will be 75% of the purchase price. On the death of a pensioner, the nominee gets the invested amount back. Is there any service provided by the government which allows me to access my land details? Yes, the central and various state governments have been trying to bring the land records online. Many states have already computerized their land records to bring in more transparency into India's real estate sector. That's great! How can I avail this service? You just need to follow a few simple steps. Step 1. First, visit the website based on your state. For instance, if your land is in Uttar Pradesh, you have to visit the link HTTP semicolon backslash backslash b h u l e k h dot u p dot n i c dot i n backslash. Step two, then select the district in which your land is situated. Suppose you have selected Gautam Buddha Nagar from the list. Step three, then select the tehsil or revenue circle under whose jurisdiction the land lies. Let your land is in Gautam Buddha Nagar from the list of tehsils. Step 4. After that, select the village or locality. Suppose your land is in Atta Gujran. Step 5. The land details can now be obtained by providing the land number as mentioned in the revenue records, which can easily be found online. For example, in our case, it is 67. Step 6. Then, enter 67 and click on the search button. You may have to fill more details like Khasra or Khata in case your land number has more allottees. Then, the site would search for your details. Step 7. Finally, click on the blue colored box which says view the details. The site would then display entire details. I want to apply for scholarship. So can you please guide me about any such service provided by the government which deals with the scholarship matters? Yes, of course. National Scholarships Portal or NSP is one-stop solution through which various services related to student scholarship are provided. 
Its services include student application, application receipt, processing as well as sanctioning of scholarships and disbursal of various scholarships to students. National Scholarships Portal is taken as mission mode project under National E-Governance Plan or NEGP. Currently, the NSP has nine participating ministry. The aim of this initiative is to provide simplified, mission-oriented, accountable, responsive and transparent smart system, thus ensuring faster and effective disposal of scholarships, applications and delivery of funds directly into beneficiary's account without any leakages. How can I apply for scholarship using this portal? It's very simple. You just need to follow few steps. First, visit the National Scholarships Portal using site http semicolon backslash backslash scholarships.gov.in backslash new student reg frm. And then, register yourself using the student registration page. Fill up the application as per the instructions given by the system. Then click on Submit button. After saving, you will get a temporary ID. Then submit your temporary ID and date of birth to fill subsequent details. After your complete registration, and online form submission, a permanent registration ID is generated which can be used for renewal and tracking the status of application. Can I edit my details after the form submission? No, you cannot edit the details until the scholarship application processing is completed. How can I renew my scholarship in future? For renewal of your scholarship, you need to apply with your bank account number and date of birth with which you have registered previous year. You can also use Forgot Registration ID to retrieve your ID. Likewise, eHospital is also one of the most important services provided by government. It's a hospital management system based on ICT solution which is specifically meant for the hospitals in government sector. Can you name some of the hospitals which provide service under this system? The list of hospitals is mentioned on the portal through which patient can book online appointment. For the registration of the patient, online registration system or ORS has been developed. It is an easy portal where citizens having Aadhaar can enroll for appointments in hospitals across various states and union territories of India. What other services are provided by e-hospitals? Getting an OPD appointment, lab reports and blood availability in any government hospital has become online and easy. Can I even take an appointment for my wife using this? Yes, of course. For this, few steps are needed to be followed. Step 1. First, visit the portal ors.gov.in slash copp slash appointment dot jsp. Step 2. Then enter Aadhaar number for the patient. If patient's mobile number is registered with UIDAI, then one-time PIN or OTP will be sent by UIDAI through SMS and Aadhaar holder would need to give consent to share his or her KYC data as stored in UIDAI with the hospital for taking OPD appointment. If in case her mobile number is not registered with UIDAI, then what should I do? In such cases, 
patient's name as in aadhar needs to be given and after doing demographic authentication with uidai patient will be requested to give a mobile number and other details like address age etc if in case user is not having aadhar number then how can he book the online appointment in such cases user would have to collect opd card from the hospital after providing identity of the patient thereafter user will be sent a confirmation through sms giving details of opd appointment after verifying yourself using aadhar number step 3 select the department in government hospital then select the date of appointment and get confirmation through an sms Finally visit the hospital on fixed date or time Aadhaar is a 12 digit unique identification number issued by the Unique Identification Authority of India on behalf of the government of India to every resident who enrolls for it How can I enroll my unique Aadhaar number For enrolling yourself to get an Aadhaar card Certain steps are need to be followed. Step 1: Filling of enrollment form. Firstly, fill the enrollment form. In case of any difficulty, you can take the guidance of the enrollment operator in filling up the form. The operator may guide you in taking assistance from local support such as village officials, field inspector, introducer staff from non government organizations or ngos civil society outreach csos etc do we need to carry any documents with us yes you need to carry original documents and a photocopy of proof of identity that is poi proof of address that is poa date of birth that is dob and proof of relationship that is por documents for verification if in case you are not carrying the photocopies of these then the enrollment center should provide the photocopies step 2 verifier verifies the residents documents after that verifier will validate form details against poi POA DOB POR documents Verify will then sign and stamp the photocopies of documents verified Step 3 Enrollment operator enters or updates the resident data into the enrollment software After that the enrollment operator enters the verified demographic resident data into the enrollment software from the enrollment form if your data has been retrieved using registrar's identifier then enrollment operator checks and corrects or completes the resident's demographic information step 4 enrollment operator records resident's consent for information sharing further the enrollment operator will ask for your consent to share the captured information with organizations engaged in delivery of welfare services accordingly the operator will select an appropriate option in the enrollment software to capture your response as yes or no step 5 Enrollment operator checks if the resident has an NPR receipt number. The enrollment operator should check if the RGI or census officials have visited your household for a population census survey and assigned an NPR receipt number that is TIN. Then he enters the NPR number in the enrollment software. Can a child below the age of 5 years get enrolled in this? 
Yes, of course. In case of children below the age of five years, one of the parents or guardian's name and Aadhaar or enrollment number shall be recorded. Step 6. Enrollment operator checks if the resident has any biometric exceptions. After entering the NPR number, enrollment operator checks to see if your eyes and fingers are missing or amputated. An enrollment center supervisor verifies the same. In case you have any biometric exceptions, these also have to be captured on the demographic screen in the form of biometric exceptions. Operator enters details of missing eye indication or missing finger indication as appropriate. Step 7. Enrollment operator checks if resident wants an Aadhaar enabled bank account. After this, the operator will ask you whether you want to link your current bank account to your Aadhaar or want to open a new bank account on the basis of your Aadhaar. If you agree to be part of the scheme of financial inclusion, then the operator will check if you have an existing bank account at one of the banks. If you already have a bank account in one of the scheduled commercial banks, the operator should capture the required account details such as bank name, IFSC code and account number. In case you want to open a new account, the operator will mention the same in the enrollment software. An account will then be opened for you in future. Step 8. Enrollment operator captures biometrics, facial image, exception if any, iris and fingerprints. Then, the enrollment operator will capture your facial features as a photograph using a web camera connected to the computer. If you have missing eye indication or missing finger indication, these should be captured as photographs using the camera. Thus, enrollment operator captures biometrics, iris. And enrollment operator also captures biometrics, fingerprints. After this, the operator will show the data entered to you on a monitor facing you and if required reads out the content to you to ensure that all captured details are correct. If you will ask for any correction of the data, the enrollment operator has to make the correction in the enrollment client software. Is there any documentary evidence required for such changes? Yes, in case of major changes like change of surname, enrollment operator will ask for the documentary evidence. Step 9. Enrollment operator provides sign-off for the data capture. Finally, the enrollment operator provides his or her fingerprint as confirmation and sign-off for the data that has been captured in the Aadhaar enrollment client. The enrollment agency supervisor's fingerprint may be needed. If there are any exceptions such as missing finger or eye and if the biometric quality is not good and the force capture option is used. In case of introducer-based enrollment, the introducer will have to provide his or her fingerprint as sign-off, confirming that the information captured is correct. If the introducer is not physically present at the time of enrollment, the enrollment can be verified by the introducer at the end of the day. 
Similarly, in case of head of the family or HOF based enrollment, the head of the family will have to provide her or his fingerprint as sign off, confirming that the information captured is correct. Lastly, operator must select the language as requested by in which the legal or declaration text on print receipt shall be printed. Then the operator will print the acknowledgement slip and the consent form in one A4 size sheet. The operator has to tear off the sheet from center. The operator will sign the slip and give it to you. Then, you have to sign the consent form and return it to the operator. In case resident is a child below 5 years, father or mother or guardian of the child whose enrollment ID was recorded in software will sign the consent form. The consent form along with the POA, POI and DOP proof is then stored as per the procedure prescribed by the registrar. That's nice. But uh, can any changes be made in the data after receiving the Aadhaar number if uh, required? Sure. If the residents need to update any demographic or biometric data, they can follow the update enrollment process. This process is quite similar to new enrollment. Let me explain this process. This process starts with the capturing resident demographic data. To do this, you need to click on menu button, then to life cycle changes, and then you need to select update resident information option. Here, the first step is to fill the Aadhaar number and resident name. One should remember that Aadhaar number and resident name are necessary for initiating the update enrollment. NPR is also mandatory field, but if it is not available, you may select the not given checkbox. Please select the checkbox, the resident is less than 5 years old. If the resident is a minor, please select the checkbox, update biometric details. If resident needs to be updated his or her biometric data. The next step is to make correction in the name. Name is a mandatory field which needs to be filled if the correction is not required in it. For making correction in the name, the operator needs to click the edit icon visible near the new name text box. This will create a new name text box. Any correction in name should be supported with a valid document like proof of identity that is POI for verification. The next step is to make correction in the personal information. This section includes correction in the gender, an age or DOB, that is date of birth. These could be corrected by clicking the edit icon which enable its corresponding fields. The next step involves the correction in contact information. The existing contact details can be corrected by clicking the edit icon available on the right side of the contact section header bar. All fields under contact section will be enabled once the operator clicks the edit icon except for mobile and email fields. This has to be taken care by the operator that all these fields are properly filled. Any change in the address field should be supported with a valid document like proof of address that is POA for verification. For correcting mobile number or email ID of a resident, the operator needs to click the respective edit icon available against the given fields. The last field of this page, that is information sharing consent, could be shared as per the resident's request. 
The next step is the updation of enrollment data is to provide references. The respective page opens up by clicking the References button. This step includes the provision of the valid documents of the details corrected for verification. For any correction in the demographic details, resident needs to provide valid documents as proof of identity and proof of address. The drop-down buttons corresponding to the identity proof and address proof will get enabled based on the corrections made in each of these sections. Operator needs to select the same document name from the given drop-down menu as submitted by the resident for the purpose of verification. Next, fill the relative details field on the page. These details are mandatory if the enrolled resident is a minor, that is, under 5 years and optional for other residents. For a minor resident, the operator needs to select the relationship from the drop-down menu button and needs to enter name and enrollment ID or Aadhaar number. For a resident of age 5 and above, if the option Verify using supporting documents is selected, then the Relative Details field is treated as non-mandatory. For a resident of age 5 and above, if the option Introducer shall verify the resident's identity or address is selected, then the session of relative details becomes non-mandatory or optional. For a resident of age 5 and above, if the option Head of Family shall verify the resident's identity or address is selected, then the Relative Details field becomes mandatory. The last step in the updation of enrollment data is printing receipt. Once the change data in the enrollment form is saved, it will display a success window with the given details. Success message This notifies that the updation in enrollment data is completed successfully. Enrollment ID, it is the ID generated on the enrollment completion. Same is printed on the receipt also. There is also a checkbox for taking the print of the declaration statements in local language. This box needs to be selected to print the declaration statements in local language in the receipt. Three buttons are displayed at the bottom of this window. These are meant for taking the print of the enrollment receipt, for attaching the documents and for moving to the next enrollment. How can Aadhaar be used during service delivery? Aadhaar seeding is a process by which UIDs of residents are accurately included in the service delivery database or service providers of enabling Aadhaar-based authentication during service delivery. How can I link my Aadhaar with my SBI bank account? For this, first you need to visit SBI Internet Banking Portal by logging into www.onlinesbi.com Then access the link Link your Aadhaar number under My Accounts. Then select the account number, input the Aadhaar number and click on Submit. Then the status of mapping will be advised to the customer's registered mobile number. You can also link your Aadhaar through your ATM channel by accessing any of your ATMs and seeding your Aadhaar with your bank account. For this, first swipe the ATM card and enter your PIN. Then, select the Menu Service Registrations. Then, select Aadhaar Registration. 
After that, select the account type and then enter your Aadhaar number. Can we also link our Aadhaar through a mobile phone? Yes, definitely. From your registered mobile number, send an SMS to 567676 in the following format. UID space Aadhaar number space account number. If the mobile number is not registered or in case the Aadhaar is already linked to account, an SMS reply will be sent to you. If your mobile number is registered with bank, you will receive an SMS confirmation of the seeding request. Then the Aadhaar number will be verified by bank with UIDAI. In case it fails verification, SMS will be sent to customer to contact any SBI branch along with Aadhaar number or e-Aadhaar. How can we link Aadhaar through our bank branch? Visit any SBI branch with a copy of Aadhaar number or e-Aadhaar. At the branch, a letter of request will be obtained along with the Xerox copy of Aadhaar letter. After necessary verification, the linking will be done by the branch. An SMS will be sent to your registered mobile number regarding the status of the seating.